What is going on guys? It's your boy Minamai here and welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for joining me for episode 11 of the Red Bull Revolution series with RB Amsterdam. If you missed episode 10, please do go back and check that one out. It was a cracking episode. We put in a really good performance in that live comm game and um, yeah, I won't obviously spoil the uh, result for you, but uh, certainly worth a watch indeed guys if you're looking to follow the journey. In today's episode, we review what has been a very successful tactic since I started employing it with the team. And I've grown tired of the state of the youth intakes at the club. And so I've decided to take matters into my own hands, guys. And I'll uh, show you what I mean by that in just a couple of minutes. Without further ado, though, let's get into today's episode, guys. Let's go. So then guys, I've played a fair few games as you can see here since we were last together for that top OSS game. Uh, fantastic 2-0 victory in that one with Leone and Sofian Boris Bell on the score sheet. Again, if you did miss episode 10, do go back and check that one out. It was a cracking episode and a really good performance live on camera. We followed that game up with a cup fixture against HSC21, who I believe are in the division below us. Um, that one went extra time, unfortunately. We did end up winning the game 4-2, but it took a lot longer than I thought it would take for us to uh, get past those guys. They gave us a really good game, which I uh, obviously wasn't too happy with, to be fair. We then returned to league action against NEC, a solid 2-0 win there against a decent team. Sofian Boris Bell at the double in that game after previously coming off the bench to score a brace in the cup fixture. So back-to-back -back braces for him, uh, earned himself a place in the team. The less we say about this one, the better. But as you can see, we were absolutely annihilated by FC20 in the league. Don't really want to talk too much about this one, if I'm honest. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm not feeling great about that. Kienu Lont got on the score sheet for us, but other than that, it was a, uh, a dismal day for us. I can't lie. So let's move on. Anyway, uh, go ahead Eagles away from home in the next fixture. A lovely 2-0 win. Kienu Lont on the score sheet again. Boris Bell joining him. Followed that up with another 2-0 win. Back-to-back -back clean sheets, guys. Boris Bell again on the score sheet. And then Joel Bikoff with a penalty to uh, round it up and secure the points for us. Our next fixture was away from home against uh, Volvike. I think that's pronounced. And uh, Keanu Lont with a brace in that game. Quincy Doe's rounding off a 3-2 win. A tight run affair there. Uh, as you can see, Keanu Lont, I criticised him in the previous episode, guys, for not... Uh, bagging up enough goals in his in his first sort of seven or ten games, and uh, he certainly he certainly heard me because he is kicking on now and uh, finding the back of the net for us on a on a regular basis. Unfortunately, we were bested by Young Utrecht. Um, these young teams they they're quite dodgy, really. They're playing very very good players that are on thousands of pounds a week. Obviously, that are in the uh, under twenty three setup. They're playing for the the B team in this division and. Um, yeah, that little bit of quality makes a massive difference and we do tend to struggle against those sides. So unfortunately, we lost that game 2-1. Quincy Doe's did get a goal for us in that one, but it wasn't enough. We did, however, manage to pull off a result against Jong Ajax. It was a really tight game, a really close run affair. But Kieno Lont with another brace in that game. And then Andy Dykes uh, with the stoppage time winner for us. Uh, you know, he, he's an interesting one. He's... He's relatively promising, guys, but I'm not sure he's entirely ready for first team minutes. He's a bit of an old fashioned forward, a bit of a target man. And, you know, if we've got some time in today's video, I will sort of introduce you to him and show you his attributes and whatnot. But I think you'll agree with me, he's probably not quite ready just yet. Anyway, uh, we then played FC Eindhoven at home and secured a 2 1 win. Quincy Doe's on the score sheet, Theo Leone chipping in as well. And uh, the last game I played was against HHC. Uh, that was a friendly game. Obviously, we have a bit of a winter break and um, pretty routine win for us. Bit of a banana skin game. Well, potential banana skin game, that one. But uh, we did come through it in the end. That obviously brings us out to today's fixture, guys, where we'll take on Young Ajax in today's Livecom game. But just before we do that, let's take a look at this uh, makeshift youth intake that I've put together for you. So I imagine you guys are thinking, what on earth is this guy going on about? How has he created his own youth intake? Well, I will uh, I will explain myself now, guys. What I've done is, because of the shoddy state of the facilities at the club at the moment and the awful nature of the youth intakes, I mean, let me just 
I'll give you a little preview of of what I mean here. So I am fed up of seeing this message right here. Don't expect much from this youth intake. It's been the same every year. I'm sick and tired of it. And um, yeah, just not having fun with it at all. So here's what I've done about it. I've decided, okay, you know, the facilities are where they are. We're trying to make the improvements. It's going to be a slow process, but I want some tasty regens at the club. So what I've done is I've scoured the Dutch clubs for their sort of under 20 freeze players. And I've looked to see who I can bring in on a free transfer with no compensation whatsoever. And then I've just gone and basically sign them all up, guys. Call me the PSG of the Dutch second tier. I'm stealing everyone's regens. First of all, we'll take a look here at Wesley Platt. He is a 17-year-old um, sort of holding midfield player slash centre-back. I'm actually training him to be a half-back for us. Looks very solid indeed. Hopefully, he will improve quite a bit. Um, if he doesn't, it's not a problem. We uh, didn't pay a penny for him. He's not on ridiculous wages. And um, yeah, you know, promising little player that could go on to do good things at the club for us. Uh, Tim Zegers, not a not part of this youth intake. He's just a bit of cover at right wing back um, because we've got a bit of unrest in the squad with um, Boersman, who I think wants to leave the club, but that's fine. I'm happy to move him on. But yeah, anyway, sidetrack a little bit. Tim Zegers comes in to provide some uh, some depth there. Here's another one of our makeshift youth intake guys. Kadir Kazin... I absolutely butchered that. Kadir... Kazanchi, I'm going to pronounce that. A three-star player already at the age of 17, guys. Looks like he's got a little bit about him. Again, probably not quite ready for the first team, but we're more than willing to see how he develops in the 23s or the uh, the 18s, respectively. But yeah, I'm sure you'll agree. Well worth bringing in on a free transfer in comparison to, in comparison, sorry, to uh, what we've had in the past. Next up, we have this young man here, Van de Bosch. Again, not going to set the world light right now. But um, yeah, you know, there could be a player in there. I don't think I'll play him out wide. I think I'm going to train him to be a central midfield player and try and improve that passing. Yeah, one of the sort of less exciting players that we've brought in. Here's a decent one though, Umberto Palmiero. Now for me, I'm going to train him as a shadow striker. I think he'll be solid in there. Uh, he's got a bit of pace about him. And um, yeah, a little bit of flair as well. Maybe a little bit of trickery, decent technique. I think he could be solid for us. And um, yeah, we'll give him time to develop. He's already a three-star player, apparently. Personally, I don't think he's quite ready, but uh, we'll see. Moving on to players now. I think these are probably the two best players that are already at a level where they could contribute to the first team. Mitchell Marsman comes in. As you can see, when they're ready for the first team, guys, they get one of these lovely chilled moose player faces, uh, regen face packs. Uh, they're awesome, guys, if you don't already use them. Although I can't believe there's people out there that don't. If you don't already use them, uh, do consider supporting Chilled Moose uh, via Patreon and uh, and using those faces because they are absolutely fantastic, guys. Anyway, back to this young man here, Mitchell Marsman. He is a 17-year-old striker already at a level, I think, where he can contribute in the first team. Three and a half star player, up to five star potential on a free transfer, guys. I mean, what more do you want? He's already made a few appearances for us, getting a, a goal and an assist in those games. He's just going to be edged into the team you know, little by little and try and build up his minutes and see what he can contribute for us. Finally, we have this player here, Senna Dursun. Now, he's a deep line playmaker by trade. I'm actually playing him a little bit deeper than he is comfortable with at the moment, but we are retraining him. He's got fantastic vision and a really good first touch, guys. I think he could be developed into a very good all-round midfield player. We are paying him some hefty wages for a player of his age. But uh, we did get him on a completely free transfer. No, we didn't. I lied. Uh, we paid a few hundred euros for him. But uh, yeah, young 17-year-old uh, Bulgarian international. And probably the player I'm most looking forward to, to developing and seeing what we can get out of him. But do let me know in the comments, guys, which one of these players do you think could potentially make the biggest impact? I reckon it's between Dursan and Marsman. But uh, let me know if you think there's a player in there that I'm sleeping on a little bit. Okay then guys, so here we go. Today's Livecom game is upon us. Today we are away from home against Yong RZ in a well in what promises to be a very tough game indeed. They're a strong side, Yong RZ, some really good youth prospects that sort of 
flirt between the uh, first and second team at RZ Alkmaar. As you can see here, we are looking very, very healthy indeed at the top of the table. 10 points clear of the next qualifying team that can actually gain promotion, and that is FC20. Obviously, Young uh, Ajax are two points ahead of them. So, uh, you know, they're creeping up on us. They could win the title, but they can't win promotion. So what I'm focused on here is the teams around us that can actually battle us for automatic promotion. And it looks like it's only going to be FC20 as we uh, sort of enter the second half of the season, guys. I could be wrong. And uh, some clubs such as NEC and De Graaf Sharp could, you know, step up to the plate and provide a challenge late on. But, but we'll see. Okay, then, guys. So... Let's run through the team news for today's huge fixture. Um, there are actually two versions of the coiled spring tactic. This one is reserved for teams that I think are arguably better than us. And it looks to pack the midfield and force the opposition into central areas where obviously we have six bodies there to deal with attacks. The actual the transition is a lot more direct as well with this one. It's direct anyway across both, but um, obviously the gap between our midfield unit and our strikers is bigger here. So we're really looking for either players such as Derson or Diara to find the long ball, or we're looking for Leone to carry the ball out from midfield and then link up with the strikers. I anticipate that RZ will have a lot of the ball in this game. They're a decent side, so... Um, yeah, a lot of talented players they have on their hands. Let's just run through the 11 that start the game for us. So Booker is obviously a mainstay in between the sticks for us. Fabian and Ashabar are finally starting to develop uh, what you can call a partnership back there, finally. Uh, Bukov and Cavellier play in the wing-back roles for us. We're going to play rather defensively in midfield, I should say, with Diara and Gerd in midfield. Diara is going to be pulling strings as the halfback while Skird is in there just as a ball winning midfielder. He's got a limited passing range and, and technical ability, so he'll just hopefully win the ball back and, and give it to one of the more creative players. He's definitely surrounded by those players in terms of Diara, Leone and Derson. Uh, Derson obviously making his live com game debut for you guys. I'm hoping he puts in a strong performance after I've talked him up in the uh, transfer section. Anyway, the uh, strike partnership is Doze and Lont there. Uh, just on the topic of Quincy Doe's, he has in fact decided to stay with us on a permanent contract, guys. Obviously, we had him on loan from Rhoda JC. Uh, his contract was expiring there and I decided, you know what, he's already here. He's already firing goals for us. I'm sure he's happy at the club. Let's try and bring him in. And uh, he leapt at the chance basically to, to sign for us on a permanent deal. So very happy to get that business done. Without further ado, though, guys, I think I've spoken more than enough so let's get into today's live com game promises to be an interesting one indeed okay so i'm thinking we need to get the boys fired up for this one yeah in terms of form we're best in the league at the minute so let's remind our players of that and try and play like it i imagine we're gonna have to ride our luck at times in this one guys but i'm hoping we can come away with a result here we've got a few very promising young players in their squad and uh, I'm hoping we can keep some of those guys quiet. Here's Leone doing exactly what we want from him. Driving out with the ball. Quincy Doe's with a really early opportunity. And a really good one as well. Oh, I hope we don't live to regret that. I really hope we don't. Here's a Luch in the wider area. For young RZ. Deckers now. Dundas. And uh, if we can limit them to strikes from that kind of range all game, I'll be rather, rather pleased. I can't believe the chance we missed in the first minute. Here's Leone now looking to whip in a nice set piece. Ashabar with a header, but just wide of the mark. Okay, it's looking looking promising in there. Diara with the long ball, but it's only speculative and uh, is turned over to the opposition. Aluch now looking to come out with the ball for Young RZ into the wide area. Decker's on the overlap. More possession in midfield now for Young RZ. Working it well. And Aluch somehow comes away with the ball from that 50-50 challenge. Deckers whips it in. And Van Brederode with the goal for young RZ, unfortunately for us. I did think we were going to live to regret that miss in the first minute. I mean, is that not a foul there? Aluch just backing into, backing into his man and rolling him there. It's a little bit naughty, but nevertheless, we find ourselves a goal down early on but could have obviously been ahead even earlier so give the boys some encouragement pull it with the throw Van Brederode 
He's one of those promising players I was talking to you about. Aluch is another one. Whipped in. Oh my god, he's tearing us apart. Van Breda Road is tearing us apart. First 20 minutes, he's got himself on the score sheet twice. Come from Aluch on that far side again. I mean, it's quite central. I'm a bit annoyed that Booker hasn't dealt with that more effectively, but find ourselves 2-0 down after having arguably the best chance of the game and squandering it. Welcome to Football Manager. Ball out wide for Deckers. A luch with the strike. Wider the mark this time. Let's, let's demand more from the boys. We need to be better. Okay. Decker's down the far side, whipped into the box, headed back to the keeper by Ashabar. It's good to compose stuff in there. Can Booker find someone? Goes long with the kick and uh, only finds an RZ player. Ashabar, that's a better ball there. Into Quincy Doe's feet. Lont now brings Durson into the game. Leone, good ball for Lont. Strikes it off of the defender's heels and it's out for a throw in on this near side. Leone to whip this one in. Cleared back to Leone. And it will go out for a throw. Hopefully we can sustain the attack. Nope. Of course we can't. Commentator's curse. End of the highlight. Cavellier with a throw heart the pitch. Lont nods it back. Cavellier whipped into the box. No one's there to meet it. And Gerd picking the ball up in a deep area for us. Leone. Cavellier whipped in. That's a great ball. Quincy Doze this time. Make sure of the finish. What a goal that is. To get us back into this game, guys. Hugely important. Really well-worked goal here. Cavellier with a great ball into the box. Penalty spot. Doze heads it in. Top bins. Keeper's got no chance. He's not getting near that. You could have two keepers in there. And you're still not getting to it. Brilliant header. Right, let's encourage the boys now. Come on. Can we grab the second before half-time and drag ourselves kicking and screaming back into this game? It's looking unlikely now. Added time. Being played out. Young RZ with the highlight now. Van Breda Road, who's caused us problems all half. Very good interception by Durson. Doze now. Skips past his man. Can he find Lont? He can. Lont. Oh, he can't make anything of it. And we go in at the break. 2-1 down. We've made a good go of this, I think. I'm going to tell the boys that they can definitely improve. Because we've certainly got it in us to cause them more problems than we have done. Start of the second half, guys. I'm hoping we can drag ourselves back into this one early doors. Booker with the kick. Goes short as we instruct him to. Diara, Ashabar. The long ball to absolutely no one. Not what we want from him. But they make a mess of the clearance. Lon finds himself in a scoring position. And that is the kind of transition goal that we are after. Fantastic. We haven't had to work hard at all for that one, guys. Young RZ making an absolute mess of this one at the back. Shocking attempt of a pass. Doe's doing exactly what we need him to do in that situation. Finds Lont and he finds the back of a net with ease. Okay, this is, this is where we want to be, guys. In with a shout. Well and truly back in this game. Aluch finds Deckers on the overlap. He'll look to cross. Gets his cross in. Blocked. Okay. Away from home. We're sitting pretty. Currently taking a point from the game. Relatively happy with our performance, to be fair. We've, we have grown into it. Van Bredero with the corner. Headed back out to him. He's going to get a second chance to put it in. A luch has his shot blocked. Okay, we know it was going to be backs against the walls at times. It's not a problem, but this is the situation we're after here. The transition. Here's Doe's running at his defender, and it's a good tackle, to be fair. To dispossess him. Deck is now. Great header from Diara to turn it over. Into the feet of Lont. Derson. Diara, can he pick someone out? It's a great ball. Sprays it out to Cavellier. Whips it in. Ooh, I thought that was fine in the bottom corner. Doe's with the volley. Derson is struggling in there. I think he's gonna, yeah, he's gonna make way for Salah Ulad, who is 
more than capable in that midfield area. Free kick opportunity for Van Breda Road, whips it in. And luckily for us, the uncontested header goes wide of the mark. Let's encourage the boys. Come on. Last 20 minutes. Just keep us in this game. And if we can nick something at the end, it would be ideal. Okay, more defending for us to do now. Bullet whips it in. Aluch with the header. Great. Oh, no. You're kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. Booker pulls off a fantastic save. And then Van Brederode finds the back of the net from, the, from an impossible angle. Oh, my God. Just not got to grips with him at all. Okay, we're going to have to go for it a bit. Jara is looking tired. He's going to have to come off. I think we'll go with Marsman. He'll go and play up top for us. Hoping for some late magic from the boys in this one. You know what? We're going to go all out. Gerd's going to come off as well. Boris Bell's going to come on. We are going to go with an extremely attacking lineup. Let's see if we can get a late equaliser. Although it's pulled back to Lind and it's a good save from Booker. We've left it very late if we're going to get anything from this. It's looking unlikely if I'm honest. Possession for Young RZ in midfield now. Bringing the ball out. It's a long shot, but dealt with well by the keeper. And Fabian clears his lines. I don't think we're going to get anything from this one, guys, unfortunately. It was a valiant effort for long periods of the game. Did well to come back into it, but when Bredero just had too much for us. Oh, what are we doing? Aluch now comes away with the ball. Fabian did well to delay him. Out to Hullet though. They're coming back at us again. Shulton. Lind with the strike. That's probably time, I would have thought. Nope, the referee's going to allow the throw. Would we get a little transition situation off this, maybe? We defend it well enough. Oh, Hullet is running down that clock. Okay, and uh, unfortunately... We are edged out by Young RZ. I'm going to tell the boys I'm not happy with the performance, but if I'm honest, I did think this was on the cards. They were just a better team on the day, to be fair. Can't complain too much for that, but it is always unfortunate to lose a game, especially in a live com game, guys. I do apologise. Not the result we were after. So I do apologise, guys. Not the result we were hoping for in today's live com game. Not at all. Uh, obviously, did well to get ourselves back into the game and we're unfortunate to uh, to lose it late on. But let's just take a look at the player that put us to the sword. Myron van Brederode. Absolutely tearing it up this season in the league. 19 appearances, 15 goals, 6 assists. Absolute joke. This is the kind of situation I was talking about in terms of Iridovici side sending their top young prospects to go and play for the B team. Um, it's just, you know... The golfing class is worth over a million euros. He's on a couple of grand a week playing in this division. Bit of a mismatch in, in my opinion, but anyone that's on the lookout for a uh, an effective young striker, guys, here's one for you. Obviously, this isn't a Wonder Kids video, but uh, when we do come across them, I'm always happy to bring them to you. Uh, it's a real shame he's not playing for us. But yeah, cracking young player there in uh, young Myron Van Brederoad. Despite the result in today's game, guys, if you did enjoy the episode, I uh, would really appreciate it if you would uh, smash that like button for me. It really does help get the video out to a wider audience. And it just, you know, lets me know that you're enjoying the series, which is always nice. If you are new to the channel, guys, I would appreciate it if you'd consider subscribing and turning notifications on so that you don't miss any future episodes of the Red Bull Revolution series and so that you can follow the series right the way through to hopefully what will be a very a successful end finally though thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to watch the video i really do appreciate your time guys and uh, i appreciate the continued support that the channel gets until next time though guys make sure you take care of yourselves make sure you check in on your friends and family as well cheers